Hi, this is Gordon Victoria Library here with a book review. Today I'm reviewing Tony Cohan's Opium, published in 1988 by Pinnacle Fiction. Now, on the cover, the synopsis states that Opium is a crime epic about passion, madness, and murder resigned supreme in the billion-dollar trade of human souls. And with a cover like this on it, you believe that it's telling the truth, or is it? Now, one thing I hate about novels with sharp covers or the synopsis is that it makes it sound or look interesting when it's false advertising. When I read Opium, I believe it was going to be a crime thriller while taking place in different countries while keeping me on the edge of my seat. Sadly, I didn't get any of that. All I got from Opium was a slow journey with nothing exciting for me, nor any suspense to make you want to keep going. While I'm glad this novel didn't have too much filler or it would have been a real chore to read through it, however, the ending left me unsatisfied. Only one scene I liked and that was it. The rest of the Opium was boring. Hell, not even a typhoon at the end of the story made it any better. As for the characters, while not flat nor heavily detailed, just crafted enough to make the story easy to get through, but none of them were interesting. Now I will discuss what happens within the world of Opium before I say my final thoughts about it. Spoiler alert. In China of 1963, two siblings are celebrating their father's 70th birthday. His son, Peter Lin, who is half Chinese, half American, has returned from Boston after finishing college, and his daughter, Sue Lin, who works as a teacher while painting on the side. As all the guests are getting settled and looking forward to being with friends and family, however, just as the party is underway, a gang suddenly bursts into the restaurant and massacres the guests along with Peter and Sullen's father. While the rest of the people manage to escape, however, they are heartbroken by the, the sudden violence that has hit them. Unknown to both siblings, their father is a powerful drug dealer who has been producing and selling opium, which his family has been doing for five generations. After the funeral, Peter is approached by Left Hand Chun, a close friend of his father's drug operation, and wants him to continue. Chun flies Peter to where the opium is being grown, stating how easy it is to make and selling it. Peter agrees and tells his sister about it, however, she doesn't want anything to do with opium, stating it will be the death of him, just like their father. While Peter is getting his opium operation going, Sunlin begins looking to her family's history to learn of how their father got into this business. She meets a scholar-slash-poet, Tuhan, who informs Sunlin on her family history on how the whole opium business started with the opium wars along how her father became a powerful drug kingpin. When Sunlin returns to Hong Kong, she is harassed by Peter's goons who threaten her to stay with him, but she refuses. When his goons destroy Sunlin's painting, she flees to San Francisco to escape Peter. Meanwhile in Paris, James Cross, or sometimes called Jim, is traveling to Spain with a woman he met while on vacation, Eva. However, they are going to Spain to enjoy the beaches. Cross and Eva had sex while they met, and now Eva is pregnant and knows a doctor who does abortions for the right price. While well, neither of them are happy about this, but they don't want to raise a child. When they reach Spain, the doctor ensures that everything will go fine, but after waiting hours, Cross goes to check on Eva and finds her dead on the operating table. Cross hides Eva's body on the beach and then goes after the doctor, which he kills him. While trying to sneak across the Spanish border, Cross is caught by police and is pinned for Eva's murder. But rather than taken to jail, Cross is picked up by a powerful kingpin, Olaid. He offers Cross a deal to avoid a prison sentence for the death of Eva and the doctor. Alain informs Cross that he has tracked down his parents, which he has been avoiding for a few years after dropping out of medical school. Cross agrees to take a suitcase full of money to Paris to purchase drugs, then give it to the buyers in California, and will be paid and reunited with his family. While traveling to Paris, Cross feels guilt and blames himself for the death of Eva, wishing he raised that child with her. Cross does what Alain wants and is paid over $10,000 when he returns to California, but swears he will finish his medical degree. Back in China, Peter is the new drug kingpin of Hong Kong. He owns a massive mansion along with a Rolls Royce and a Lamborghini in his driveway. However, Peter has become obsessed with finding his sister, Su Lin. Peter, Peter gets his goons to go after her, stating he won't let anything break his family apart. Cross passes his finals in medical school and is working in San Francisco. There he meets Su Lin, who is working part-time as a nurse while paying on the side. The two strike up a friendly conversation, which doesn't take long for Cross and Sulin to love each other. However, on the day that President John F. Kennedy is assassinated in Dallas, Cross leaves Sulin's apartment to do some shopping. When he returns, he finds Sulin gone and fears she's been kidnapped. Using all the money he owes, along with his contacts, Cross leaves San Francisco and travels to Japan, where he meets a fierce reporter, Billy Strange, along with Tu Hun, 
Together they traveled to Hong Kong to find Solon and bust Peter Lin's drug business for good and to keep his opium from reaching American streets. While this review makes it sound like something big is going to go down when Cross reaches Hong Kong, but as I said earlier, you don't get any of that. It felt very rushed towards the end of Opium, while the author took a back seat rather than make it more engaging. Also, towards the ending, a typhoon is on its way to China. Now, rather than let the reader know what a typhoon is, Tony stops telling the story and has one page that goes into detail on what a storm is, then goes back to telling the story. He even adds a film reference during this typhoon, Key Largo, which would have been better than having a whole page on what a dangerous storm is. And throughout the novel, there is hardly any suspense, only little bits of action that are spread far apart throughout Opium. The only scene I like from Opium is when Cross and Tu Hun are in a bathhouse as they are discussing how to get someone out of Hong Kong when three Akuza members tried to kill them. Tuhan pulls out a short sword hidden in his towel and slices the Yakuza members' limbs off while making a bloody mess in the bathhouse, leaving Cross stunned yet amazed how quickly Tuhan acted. Sadly, you don't get any more action scenes after that. However, who sent those Yakuza members is never explained, and before that event happened, Tuhan was going to train Cross how to use a sword, which made me think of Cross having to use it while he rescues So Lin and maybe face against Peter Lin, but that doesn't happen. Instead, what I got was Cross easily sneaks into Peter's mansion, knocks out one guard, and flees with Sun Lin. No challenge whatsoever. While I'm glad this novel wasn't given too much filler on events that happened during the 60s, but left me disappointed with no twist or turns in the story, and most of the characters were born or not interesting enough to make you really like them. In the end, Opium is a letdown. Nothing juicy or anything interesting to make you want to read more of it. If you read it, you'll forget about it and f read something else that's more interesting and better with more moments to keep you on the edge of your seat. Or action that makes you hunger for more. So I would say pass on Opium as I'm sure you'll find something better than it. When I posted my review of this novel on the Facebook group Men's Adventure, one member commented that Opium sounded like it was trying to be like James Corval's Shogun or Eric Van's The Ninja, which I agree with, and the false advertising of it trying to cash in on the success of those two novels. One day I'll read both Shogun and The Ninja to see how those novels are. So that's it for the review today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And on a little personal note, um, I actually finished Opium first uh, uh, back, um, back in December as I wanted to get the book done because it was just getting boring. And... After I finish it, uh, you probably noticed behind me that my furniture has been uh, rearranged, so I decided to wait until after my furniture was removed before doing the video. And then I was also getting close to finishing Hotter Blood, so I decided to knock two birds with one stone and do two book reviews in one day. However, after I was done recording all the stories from Hotter Blood, um, and then... I had to take all the video clips and edit to make it to one video. By the time I was done, it was like 8 or 9 p.m. And I was just really tired. And I just decided, you know what, I'll just uh, do the opening review another day. So I'm glad to have it uh, finished uh, finished today. As I said in my previous review, I will be uh, reading William Gibson's uh, Neuromancer along with um, Ro Roland Mafia Snow. I'm looking forward to reading those books. And... Um, Oh, before I forget, um, I am planning to do some Tubless videos as well. I haven't forgotten about the one that I was thinking about doing, and I also got a few others I'm planning as well. So I'll be um, working on some Tubless videos too while I'm reading the current books that I'm reading. All right, that's it for the video today. Um, as, as I said, that, okay. That's it for the video today. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time with the next book review. Later.